A few months back, I made a video regarding the Red Cert store refresh in CN. The is targeted at that audience, but it can be also used as a reference for whales for which potentials, gameplay-wise, are worth more. At the end, I've included a small infographic regarding my personal recommendations and a summary of this video, so skip using the timestamps now if you want to check that out. For starters, let's actually outline what we are looking for in potential upgrades. So the number one thing are very strong talent upgrades such as Bagpipes Potential 5 or Surda's Potential 5 which gives plus 2 to SP and Resignore respectively. After that, we are looking for DP centric potentials which can be very invaluable in low op content especially when it's someone like Chowder who you bring to nearly every map. Following that, we also want to look for attack potentials as these are great on operators that have low damage per attack but attack multiple times such as Exusiae or Ash. For guards, we have Surder, Silver Ash and Mountain. Of course, with Surder taking precedence with a potential 5 being one of the most game-changing potentials in the game and improving her DPS by a substantial amount versus enemies with high res. Her potential 6 is also situationally worth getting as she's one of the most common operators used in low op content. However, I've often seen that other operators who are meant to be deployed first have a bigger port gate than her. Silver Ash's potential 5 improves his redeploy talent, which is very important for stuff like 1p relay, as well as the fact that he's one of the most common heli drop units out there, so it certainly does help. Besides that though, he gains noticeably less than Surtur, so I will place him at a lower priority. In regards to his potential 6, he is used as an opener more commonly than Surtur, and there are some instances where he is DP gated, for example his potential 2 minus DP cost at the stage H7-4, so getting his pot 6 might be a consideration. Moving on, we have Mountain potential 4 which improves his attack. Mountain is a brawler and he has low attack in compensation for his very high attack speed, so the flat plus attack does benefit him quite substantially. I do not recommend getting his potential 5 unless you're going for potential 6, because Mountain's P5 is relatively underwhelming. However, he can be P6 restricted a lot of the times, because he is the cheapest lane holder, and oftentimes one of the first units you will deploy on a map. For defenders, your options are really limited. It's basically only Mudrock and Saria, both with their potential 5 respectively. Mudrock potential 5 makes a bigger difference than you probably think, given by the fact that it's the difference between her surviving in 3 op JT8-3 and her dying. Honestly, I think that Mudrock's potential 6 is also worth it, because there is a lot of times that you want to place her first in a low op context, so you might as well go all the way. This is further exacerbated by the fact that Sarah's potentials don't really do a whole lot, so I would just recommend placing them all on Mudrock instead. However, let's say you don't have Mudrock, don't like Mudrock, or already have Mudrock at potential 5, Sarah's potential 5 is also something that's relatively decent because it does give her some extra stats with her talent upgrade and the extra 20 something defense doesn't hurt either especially when she at high levels can substitute the role of a pure defender. For medics, the clear winner is Kalstead but followed by Nightingale and Shining. Kalstead's potential 5 and actually potential 6 is very worth it, more so than the other medics because again, a lot of the times, you do want to deploy her first, so the minus DP costs do matter. Her potential 5 improves the talent, and allows Monster to deal more explosion damage and stun for a longer period of time, which, while situational, can be relatively helpful. Followed by her, we have Nightingale, and Nightingale is an extremely underrated medic in my books. Her potential 5 increases her talent, which gives an extra 2 rest to all allies within range, which is relatively important, and the other potentials actually reduce the deployment cooldown, which is something that is also very desirable due to the fact that she gains extra cages upon redeployment. Last deployment pod is also okay, but I only recommend it after if um, you finish Calstead P6. Lastly, we have Shining, which is far outshone by Nightingale due to the prevalence of arts in the damage meta as opposed to physical. Shining's a unit that you'll be using far less often as compared to Nightingale, but her potentials are okay if looked at in a vacuum. If you're going to put potentials on Shining, I recommend just going the full way and getting the plus 
5 defense pot as that's really the only thing that matters. Owing to the fact that her previous talents really aren't something to be impressed about with minus 2 DP being okay at best and 3 ASPD being purely pitiful. Next we have Casters. This one involves Aya, Ifrit and Dusk. Aya's potential 3 is huge with the heli drop ability of her S3 allowing it to be near instant. However, both of Ifrit's talent potentials are great, therefore I'll recommend Aya 3 for the talent upgrade and then moving on to potential 5 Ifrit for both of the res red and the SP talent upgrades. Moving back to Aya to finish her off at either potential 5 or potential 6 and then moving to Dusk. Aya's DP pod is also pretty nice however not as great as other ground units because you usually don't start off with an Aya. Dusk uh, potential 5 I believe is slapped on heavily. It improves her attack by 6% which doesn't seem that great on paper but considering the fact that her skill 1 which is her main skill is attack skill the 6% attack changes her DPS from around 700 to 770 I believe so it is a substantial increase. The potential pot for Dusk I wouldn't really recommend since she's already so expensive and there's very little times where you want to place her on the field. Besides, she's a great unit for general content but doesn't see a ton of use in stuff like high risk CC or low op so it's not that important. For supporters, this one is tied between Scouter and Cicerin with their potential 4 and potential 5 respectively. Although Suzerun potential 5's talent upgrade boosts more raw power due to the fact that it acts essentially as a mastery 4 for Suzerun skill 3, I believe that Scouter is actually used more commonly and can be a great like so-called lazy unit for a lot of maps, especially with her skill 2. So Scouter's potential upgrade for plus attack has less raw strength but more general versatility. Personally, I'll go for Suzerun 5 first and then go for Scouter 4 or Scouter 6 because Scouter 5, although less of an upgrade than her attack pod, is actually pretty decent in its own right and the minus 1 DP is really good since you want to place Scouter down as soon as possible in order to activate her skill too. Going to Snipers, there's actually a pretty clear winner and it's not Ash or Axia. Although they are both phenomenal units, the key unit for Snipers is actually Chowder, as she is by far the most broken unit in the game and her potentials do help that, even if it's less than Surda's. Her potential 5 is pretty decent for less RNG and her potential 6 is definitely worth considering due to the fact that she is often placed very early and is pot gated for certain compositions, such as for CC6 Risk 32 without bagpipe potential 5, wherein Chowter potential 6 is needed. Following that, we have a tie between Ash 4 and XUCI 4, both of which are their attack potentials which greatly improve their ability. Their potential 5s and 6s can be considered, but I'll re only really be going that far if you really like their playstyle or you play Sniper Knights or you're into high risk CC, where both of them do see substantial use. Their attack pot is just by far the most important potential for them, and it increases their damage considerably, and allows, say, Exia to go past certain breakpoints, such as CC5 risk 31 with a maxed Scouter. As for specialists, there's honestly only one option that I'll recommend, and that's Phantom. Weedy is like an okay unit if you really want to, but it's been proven time and time again that her attack speed potential can screw up some strats and of course there will be strats that do involve her attack speed potential so it's more of a you decide kind of thing but it's not something that I'll recommend straight away as a direct upgrade. Phantom is potential 4 is pretty great because it's an extra attack pot and he attacks many times with those linearly decreasing attack buffs. His redeploy pot and his DP pot are also included in there and that's substantially helpful for a fast redeploy even though he has a module added. Phantom Potential 6 is something that I'll also consider, especially when there's nothing else you can really put your specialist tokens towards and you also get one potential for free from the CC shop. Lastly, we have Vanguard. This is probably the class that most regular players would actually be wanting to put a potential towards because of Bagpipe. If you do have a Bagpipe Potential 5, the other considerations are Saga and Silage. 
I'll talk about Bag first. Her talent pod is probably the single most impactful potential in the game, and it's something that can be noticed in general content. So the argument that um, potentials are unnoticeable and irrelevant for general content doesn't really apply here because it is a significant quality of life change for you to have instant flag bearers and it allows you to run some very interesting DP stuff like double flag S1 or Texas instant skill 2. It's also the potential that is the most restrictive for high risk CC and strats become much much easier if you have the potential. As an example for CC5 there were dozens and dozens of different creative and innovative CC5 clears but I could only find two or three that did not involve a bagpipe potential 5 due to the extreme DP costs that are often seen in CC. Besides just the talent pot increase, her other potentials are pretty decent. She attacks 3 times per hit with S3 with a 10 attack buff, so the flat attack does do wonders on her as well. The additional chance to trigger her talent isn't bad either, although it's only 3%, and the minus 1 DP is certainly very enviable for a unit that you're probably going to deploy very early in many maps. Silage 6 I'll personally put above Saga, for pure high risk CC use, but the thing is CC7 isn't really a good indicator of Silage's potential, but regardless she is going to be a pretty decent unit in that regard, and minus DP pods on flag bearers make a huge difference in high risk CC, where starting DP and the DP risks impact your strategy substantially. Saga is still a great unit and her dodge can be very useful as evidenced by her usage in CC5, however I wouldn't place her potentials on the same level as Silage. Overall though for the last two it's generally up to preference and you can do one or the other.